It seems like chia is all anybody's talking about. And we're not talking about those little planters that you put the goo on. We're talking about the cryptocurrency. Oh! It's an exciting new cryptocurrency. And the reason it's exciting is because it's changing the face of cryptocurrency farming by going with a completely different method through uh, proof of sp or proof of space. Is that what you call proof it? Proof of space and time. Yes. Now we've had a couple of episodes where we're talking about uh, some of the questions that have come in about Chia and even more are rolling in as people are starting to catch on, they're getting involved. And so the questions are getting a little bit deeper. Jeff, I'm getting involved. Yes, you are. Actually, we both are getting involved. Ah! It's exciting times. So I'm going to hop right into it and I'm going to see if I can stump Robbie. Oh, you got some questions to I, stump the chump? I do. If they're right. getting deeper, if they're getting harder. And, Let's hope uh, I did enough research. I hope so. What do you got for me? All right. First question. Yeah. For my Chia farm drive, yeah. should I format an NTFS? Uh, okay. So this is the farm drive. This yes. is nothing to do with the plotter. Correct. I am planning to put my Chia farm on a Raspberry Pi. Four. Um, so it's going to be an external drive on my Raspberry Pi connected because it's such a light, like so low powered, so low cost. And so NTFS is not the right solution. But the problem that we run into is that we want our uh, farming drive. So where we put our plots to be um, accessible from any machine. So that be like, I, I'm assuming Jeff that your um, your plotting system is a Windows system, yep. as an example. So because I'm going to be moving it onto a Raspberry Pi, which is Linux, I want a format that's going to be compatible with that. Of course, yes, I can use NTFS, but then you got to install NTFS 3G. you got to get everything up and running with read, write, X. Forget about all that and just go XFAT. XFAT is compatible right out of the box with Windows and Linux as long as you install the xfat-utils and fuse tools uh, using your favorite package manager. Um, so just type in apt install um, xfat-utils and you'll be able to access that drive. So it's as easy as that. So I would go with xfat. Would be where I, I, would go. I like xfat. Yeah. I need to lose some weight. All right. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, the next question. All right. Will I have to replot once pools are available because right now there I'm are sorry. no pools okay so i'm sorry uh, uh, the question is once pools are available for chia coin will i have to replot my farm because i've already plotted it for solo mining correct. or solo farming correct so, yes and no um so yes in that if you want to use that same space for pools yes you will have to refarm it, uh, re replot it. Um, but the fact is, is that plotting takes a long time, Jeff. And so what I would actually do is I would take a different approach and instead of replotting, just simply continue plotting. But as we continue plotting, we're going to continue plotting um, for the pools. Right. Does that make sense? So Totally makes sense. So right now we're plotting for solo farming, but we can't use those same uh, those same plots for pools um, when pools are available to us we want to be able to create new plots and those plots will be accessible by right. our <laughs> by our pools makes sense now so, uh, like add to it yeah now speaking of pools they're yeah. not yet available no do we know not when? technically i mean people are there there are friends like uh, jeff if you and i wanted to go together and say hey let's create like a, a clustered environment where you and i are creating a bit of a pool but as far as official pools go um the question is when i don't have an answer to exactly when i don't think anyone really does however it should be noted that just um a few days ago as we're recording this video but um i think may 18th we started to see some action on the official Chia Network GitHub. And on that, um, on that GitHub page, we started to see some open source code coming out for pool um, connectivity for the Chia plotter. So um, this is going to be really exciting. Uh, do we know when it's going to actually take place? No, but it's very, very soon. I mean, May 18th, we started to see the code going up and uh, we're going to start seeing that uh, take effect.
That's exciting. Very yeah. cool. All right. Um, should I say what pools are? Sure. So as we're solo farming, that means that it's your hardware trying to get Chia coin. As we pool, it'd be Jeff and me uh, working together uh, with the power of all of our computers in order to get, well, all of our storage, I guess, in, in this proof of uh, work, uh, proof of space and time, not proof of work. And uh, so we can kind of pool everything together. It's exactly as it sounds. And uh, with that pool, we'll be much more likely to get Chia. Um, so as a public pool becomes available, that means that there may be hundreds or even thousands of Chia farmers who are going to be using uh, the same pool. And so me, the little guy who just has four terabytes of Chia um, plots, uh, I have much more chance of actually seeing some Chia in my lifetime. Right. It's true. Okay. Now, speaking of plotting, yeah. uh, if you've stopped plotting, say mid plot uh mid plot yeah mid plot <gasps> no don't do this no could be that you accidentally stopped it maybe okay. intentionally stopped it or maybe there's a Your power kids tripped over the power cord exactly <laughs> so can you just pick up from where it's going nah. will things be frozen uh yeah the plot will be lost um so anything that you're plotting will be lost um but your previously finished plots will be okay um, but the stuff that is lost, um, there's a little trick right now, and this may be improved in time. I, I mean, we're still very, very young with Chia, um, so the, the software itself, I mean. Um, so what you need to do, um, if you're on Windows, um, you're going to go to C colon slash users slash your name slash uh, dot Chia. And in that folder, you're going to see a wallet folder. Just simply rename that something else or delete it and then reopen the Chia uh, blockchain software. And I should say, before you rename it or delete it, make sure you have the software closed or like actually kill the task. Um, on Linux, it's gonna be in your home folder slash dot Chia. So that's the wallet folder. You're not gonna actually lose anything other than the currently progressing plots. Um, so your old plots will still be okay, things will sync, and then you'll get back and up and running. Um, but, you know, that's, that's, that's just one of those kind of little bit of glitchy kind of, um, it hasn't, it hasn't been perfect as far as if a plot is partially created and then fails, um, but you can resume and, and start over, uh, I should say, um, if, if that happens. Okay. All right. Now, for people who are looking to do a little bit more, one of the comments we've got is mm -hmm. that I'm hearing of people having Chia factories. 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 Factory and farms. I, and I like the sound of that. <laughs> now, assuming I can afford the components to say a hundred terabyte farm. A hundred terabytes. That's gonna be expensive by the way for the components. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. But how can I get it fully up and running as quick as possible? Oh my gosh. Are you kidding me? So imagine if you've got a hundred terabyte farm, okay? You have to actually plot those plots first. So how would you do that? You would have to have multiple NVMEs set up in a RAID array, set up in some kind of, or not even a RAID array. I mean, let's be honest. Um, you could have just separate plotters. You could have separate NVMe drives and you could be plotting on each of those at the same time and then piping that data out to the farm. But a hundred terabytes, Jeff. That's a lot. That is a lot. I mean, I'm getting, so on my i9 9900K uh, with uh, an M dot, uh, no, I've got a, I'm using an SSD right now, just an SATA SSD, and I'm getting about two plus a day. So like, you've got to imagine, you would have to have an astronomical amount of speed as far as your NVMEs go, as far as your data goes, your IO. Right. Um, it would just be <laughs> ridiculous. But you see folks doing this and you, you say it's like a factory, um, and I call it a factory farm, but that's exactly what it is. You have to have the amount of capacity in, or, uh, in order, the, the power to, to actually create those plots. Right. You know, Jeff, like you've been I, plotting for the past couple of days. Yeah. How's that been? Uh, it's, it has been a lot slower than I anticipated, but part of that is because I'm running an NVMe, but it's over USB 3.0. Oh, 
3.1. Or 3.1. Okay. Um, 3.0. 3.0, yeah. Because you're not even on uh, USB-C. That's you're correct. On the old uh, USB-A. Yeah, I only had one NVMe slot on my, uh, my computer, and that's where everything's located. So mm -hmm. I'm doing everything over the, the USB. So yeah. it is slower. Mm -hmm. Now, getting into the post-plotting, post-farming, you've earned some Chia. We have, Great. Yeah, we have. Fantastic. Ha Cash we, out. Let's go buy some Wendy's. And, the, <laughs> and the, we have two questions about that. And uh, the, the first one, Chia isn't readily available on high profile exchanges like Binance or Kraken yet. True. Yeah. You can get it on some exchanges, but they're very down the rung in what I would call trustability, but that's my mm -hmm. opinion. Um, so, so this person's asking, what do I do with my Chia? Hold. Yeah. Okay. So is the price... Uh, and how is the price fluctuating if I can't do anything with it? And and what do I do if I want to trade it? Well, you can't yet. That's coming, presumably. Um, but this is all, you know, we're, we're early adopters. We are the early bird right now, okay? Mm -hmm. So understand that. So, so a big part of the process of farming Chia right now is to be that early bird. You want to be the ones who get this Chia coin um, while it's really easily available uh, for by farming mm -hmm. rather than purchasing because you've seen the price go from six thousand dollars down to a thousand and Jeff was telling me what about eight hundred today uh, yeah um, as we're US. recording this because we're seeing um, we're seeing the cryptocurrency market right now we're, we're seeing a consolidation so um, things are kind of figuring themselves out and and we're gonna see those prices equalize and and we're going to see where those land. Now, as far as Chia goes, because it's not currently on an exchange that is readily available, like Binance, um, we're not going to be able to trade that. Right. So it's all about holding. It's all about accumulating and holding at the moment. And um, sure, there are exchanges that will allow you to trade. Um, but I would, as Jeff says, stay away from those for the moment. That's just my personal opinion because... Um, I'm, I'm going to hold my Chia. Absolutely. Okay. So then is Chia a, a hold coin or is it setting up to be a trade coin? What once coin, it's... Jeff, isn't a hodl coin? Well, fair enough. Yeah. But there are some coins where it's like, this is the one I'm going to trade with. It's focused okay. on trading. Okay. Or is this one of those ones because it's a new model we and the fact that it's... I don't know that we really know yet. I mean... Uh... There are coins that are very volatile in that their their value fluctuates incredibly. And right now, I know it's a very confusing time to get involved in chi uh, cryptocurrency in general because it's so volatile, the entire market. But um, we're going to see that pan out as things start to equalize and figure themselves out. Um, but as far as Chia goes, we don't really know where it's going to fall. And when it does fall, we just want to be in there. We just right. want to be a part of that uh, cryptocurrency as far as the, the market goes. So if it's worth $400 when it finally drops on the cryptocurrency exchanges, great. I want to have a thousand of them. <laughs> so if, do I. Yeah. But if if it ends up being worth two or $3,000, like we just don't know, folks. I mean, realistically, there's no way to really know at this point what it's going to be valued at when it hits the exchange. Right. When it does though, you, you know, you hope to have some. And, and the fact is, now Jeff, you were asking a little bit about pooling um, and whether or not we're going to have to re-plot um, our pool, uh, our farm in order to pool. Um, the fact is we can do both. We can both farm pool Chia and we can farm uh, solo Chia. Right. So uh, knowing that, well, we, we may as well kind of get in on it as soon as possible and then uh, when it all drops, when everything comes together, uh, we're ready for it. We've got our gear. We're ready to go. You've accumulated whatever you've got in the storage closet and put something together. Yep. Sounds good. So let us know, are you farming Chia? That's, that's what I want to know. I, I, do, I do know of some people who are farming Chia. It's exciting to be at, in at the beginning. So are you? Let us know. Comment below. And uh, if you have any more questions about Chia, just ask. And when it hits the moon, patreon.com slash category five. <laughs> nice plug. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> All right. Back to plotting. Plotting.